So hello everyone, my name is Yan Zhu, and here's my presentation about the FIX 2211 Lab 1 constant velocity. So first, uh, about like this presentation, I will give an introduction and then the analysis of the motion and then the computational model and then the comparison between the model, the motion in real time and computational model. Then it's about the thinking questions. So the introduction. So the purpose of this lab is first to observe an object moving in a constant velocity and then experiment that by using the tracker to analyze the object's motion, like by first film the video and then uh, use the tracker to track its velocity. And then to find to build a computational model and then apply the fundamental physics principles behind the scene. So here are some important principles. The first one is about like the constant velocity. So it means that the net force acting on the bow must be zero. And then about the Newton's second law, which is the important uh, law about this lab. So it states that how the forces acting on the system from its surrounding cause changes in momentum of the system over time. So if there's a no net force acting on the system, then change in momentum is zero and the velocity will remain a constant. So it can be derived with two momentum update formula and um, velocity update formula. So about the momentum update formula, it states that the final momentum is equals to initial momentum plus the net force multiplied with the delta T. So if the net force is zero, then like the second term on the right-hand side will be zero. So it states that the final momentum is equals to the initial momentum. So the second one about like the velocity update formula, we can derive that from the first one by divided by the mass. So we can find out the final velocity is equals to the initial velocity plus the net force divided by mass uh, multiplied by the change in time. So the second term on right-hand side is still the zero since the net force is zero. So we can find out the final velocity is equals to the initial velocity. So which means that if the net force is zero, then the final uh, momentum is equals to the initial momentum and final velocity is equals to the initial velocity. So here is like the uh, analysis of the motion. So I kind of wrote a tape, which is the circular one on the very smooth table. So like the uh, like the force in this system is like kind of the normal force that is support uh, from the table and also the uh, like the weight of this uh, object. And also there's a very very little friction due to the smooth of this table. And then uh, I uh, kind of uh, uh, track that in the tracker and record uh, each time and also the like the position and also see the graph by plotting uh, each position uh, via the time. So with that graph, I also built a computational model based on the derived velocity. So I just put like the mass of the bow to be one since the mass doesn't uh, affect the velocity by canceling out in the formula and also like the uh, initial position to be zero and velocity is like uh, what I calculated, uh, which is 0.005723. And then like the time, initial time is zero and delta T uh, to be one divided by 30 because like the video is recorded uh, by like 30 frames per second. And then on the right hand side, like the, uh, here's the, like the update velocity and the position formula. They are used to map the motion of the ball. So then I uh, plot the graph, like the observed one and also the predicted one from the model. So basically like the, uh, they are overlapped, like the, there's a one blue line and one red line. Uh, the, uh, the right line is correct because it's the predicted one and the blue line is basically a little bit off uh, because that is what I observed. And I think the reason that they are overlapping is because the really little friction on my smooth table. So then for the thinking question, what if the fleet the axis? So for now, the uh, right is positive and left is negative. So if I flip it, then the uh, right will be negative. So my bow will go in, uh, in a negative direction, which means the line will be going downward. But then we can still give the uh, have the same conclusion because we can still calculate the velocity by using the ratio of my line. So which means that it still stays the same. And is it possible for you to say how many pushes and pulls are added together to give zero net force? Well, I can see that uh, from my uh, model or and my observed uh, motion, the like the net force is basically the zero. So I can tell like there's um, a normal force and the gravity uh, act on my object and also uh, very, very little friction and probably some other forces, but they are very uh, little to tell. And that's all. And thank you for listening.